Good day, fellow rockers and monsters. Welcome to the Metal Connection, the connection to all things metal. Or actually, I should have said the connection to all things Steve Grimmett. Because that's what I'm doing today. I'm doing an artist spotlight on Steve Grimmett. And uh, yeah, how I originally thought of these artist spotlight series was actually because of Steve Grimmett, because Steve's done so many different side projects and he's been involved in so many different projects in his life that I was like, how do I um, not just like show the Grim Reapers, but how do I like spotlight everything that Steve Grimmett, the artist, has been involved with? So here we are. And I know a couple months ago I did uh, Danzig and we did a Dio group show. And after we did the Dio group show, I basically realized, well, we basically talked about all of Dio's projects that he's been involved with in his life. So after we recorded the video, I just kind of asked a couple guys that were that were on the show. I was like, I'm just gonna turn this into a artist spotlight. So I actually also turned that uh, Dio group show group show into an artist spotlight series. So I guess this would be technically group our artist spotlight series episode number three, Steve Grimmett. So, uh, yeah, Steve Grimmett was born uh, 1959 and makes him 62 in England. So he's, uh, you know, authentic new wave of British heavy metal guy. And uh, it's kind of, obviously, I should hold up here for a second. Is, uh, he was uh, briefly a member of Chateau in 1983. I, I don't own Chateau, and I didn't really plan on talking about it because it's all, it wasn't all that great. Like, I, I kind of briefly checked it out, like, uh, audio samples on YouTube, and it's not that great. It'd be cool to own, I suppose, but it's all that not great. It's skippable. So let's skip that and move on to uh, the first uh, Grim Reaper album, See You in Hell, 1983. Chateau was 83 as well, so uh, you would have done two projects in the same year. But anyway, Steve Dremont can handle that sort of stuff. Uh, he's the man. And uh, yeah, see you to hell, 1983. We got uh, some of my favorite sound of tracks, and, and I, I probably should halt myself and say, this is not a Steve Grimmett biography. This is not a Steve Grimmett documentary. This is me kind of just running through the albums that I have that Steve Grimmett has put out in his life. And I'll touch on some of my favorite songs and different tracks, and maybe some notes that I made on specific key tracks that I do like. So. Again, this is not a documentary, it's not a biography, it's just me confessing my love to Steve Dramet and his voice and all the projects that he's done that I own, of course. I'm not gonna show I'm not gonna talk about the ones I don't own. So uh, yeah, see you in hell, 1983. Well, this is a double thing, so we'll all just talk about we'll be talking about both these albums and specifically, but uh, see you in hell, some of my favorite tracks from this one. It was obviously the opening track. We get we get a sign as things to come of his voice of what Grim Reaper is going to sound like, it was going to be about. So, right from the opening track, it's a good sign of things to come of everything that's uh, everything that Steve is going to be doing in his life. And uh, Dead on Arrival's killer track, Liar. We got a pretty cool, uh, catchy, fast spoken uh, kind of right before the chorus there. Uh, Wrath of the Reaper is full on new wave of British heavy metal fist pumper, Wrath of the Reaper. And some new track near the back, near the back half here. All, all hell let loose has some soaring, soaring essential speed for that vocal there. And that's uh, see you in hell. I'm gonna move on to fear no, fear no evil, 1985. I guess this is it's kind of shitty. This compilation that I have here, it doesn't. It has the full cover of this on the back, and then for the full cover of fear no evil, it just shows the CD. It shows the CD there well, and then of course the front there, the, the small little blown up one. So I'll show the CD as it's the bigger of the two. And yeah, Fear No Evil, 1985. Again, another great opener there. You know, we got Take My Hand, Fear No Evil, uh, Never Coming Back. We got a catchy classic uh, chorus there. Matter of Time, another another soaring high register. Uh, you know, that's just classic Steve right there on Matter of Time. And, well, I flipped it back. I flipped it inside out so I could show the big picture of that. But we got the track listing here of both the albums there. 
And uh, where was I? Yeah, let the thunder roll. It's almost like a uh, let, let the thunder roll. Almost reminds me of like a Iron Maiden esque uh, kind of gallopy kind of beginning there, and then it just evolves into this you know full on new wave of British heavy metal sound there. And uh, final scream, you know, uh, yeah, I like that. I like final scream has this kind of kind of weird intro talking intro with this creepy voice kind of talking down he's like and it's kind of this the funny thing that's going on there he's like they, they talk right before the song and it's just like the, the kid is saying i'm 26 and the evil voice is like you're a goddamn child <laughs> so there we got that and uh next up we got rocky to hell 1987 i don't own rocky to hell 1987 but I do have this best of uh, Grim Reaper. It does have a bunch of those songs from 87. So I'm going to show that as my Rocky to Hell 1987. And which one's Steve there? Steve's there. That's Steve right there. So uh, Rocky to Hell 1987. So what I'm going to show for this is uh, again, we got another great uh, opening song, Rocky to Hell. You know, the back, and mind you. And then at this point, a lot of the backing vocals remind me of that arena metal 19 you know late era late 80s era arena metal sound with they with those big big melodic backing vocals so this album features a lot of those big big arena uh backing vocals right that was kind of big with the arena metal and arena rock but uh, kind of a vampire cool kind of gravesite rocker there Lust for Freedom, you know, more background gang vocals, really cool, arena-ish vibe. Uh, Rock Me Till I Die. I'd say Rock Me Till I Die is probably the favorite, my favorite song on Rocky to Hell. Um, and then I Want I Want More. Again, more, more of that uh, uh, 80s arena metal sound on that. And, and then, I don't know why Grave Digger kind of disbanded or whatever, but uh, a band onslaught contracted Steve to do the vocals on this album in 1988. So Rocky to uh, Rocky to Hell was 87, and a year later Steve Grimet was back with Onslaught in 1988. And uh, this is a big adjustment for Onslaught fans. Like Onslaught was, I'd say, like an early wave of black and thrash, like they were very evil. I know the first album was very evil, and then the force in 85 was even more kind of satanic and thrashy and black thrashy. I love that stuff. So switching over to black thrash to Steve Grinnett's melodic soaring high registers is quite the change. It's, it's very hard to take in at first, but uh, Oh man, do I ever love this album. This album is a thrash earth. And it's cool, all these songs are long, and they kind of, Steve kind of just sings his parts. He does great. And then the band kind of just does a lot of these progressive thrashing solos and things like that. It kind of leaves the band a lot of room to work. And uh, yeah, really cool stuff going on here. I absolutely love this, uh, love this album. And uh, yeah, Steve's voice, Steve's voice, great over this stuff. Just sounds perfect. Like, I love this flashing high register vocal stuff that's going on here. This is incredible, and the progressiveness of it. Like again, a lot of these songs are seven, eight minutes sort of thing. And yeah, man, this stuff's awesome. And yeah, shell stock, just ripping riff, headbanger, uh, lightning war. You got a marching gallop thrasher there, you know. Die, die by a blitzkrieg. So that's uh, that's lightning war killer stuff. Then there's a cool little actually ACDC cover song, uh, number five here, Let There Be Rock. Uh, that's a cool actually ACDC cover song there. And right after that is What Up on the Ice. Fantastic, man. Uh, what did I write down? Oh, oh yeah, I wrote down some of the choruses there. To win or lose, we play this dying game. That's cool, epic thrash. Or I think that's like an eight minutes. I think that's like a eight, 12 minute song. Is that the 12 minute song? I know there's a 12 minute song here, like 10 minutes on that really, but 
But that's that. That's that for that onslaught. Don't miss it on that. And it's funny is I own this album and I didn't even know that Steve Grimmett was on it. So I own this China uh, Sign in the Sky album from 1989. So I'm doing chronological order here. Onslaught, Onslaught in Search of Sanity was 88. This is 89. And it's funny when I was researching the for the Steve Grimmett thing, uh, uh, Discogs, I was like, Steve Grimmett did backing vocals on this. So no wonder I love this album because it's so melodic. It has these catchy choruses that kind of just have these hooks and things like that. And little did I know that Steve Grimmett, old, still, old Steve, did some uh, backing vocals on this. So uh, it's funny. I, I own this and I didn't even know that he did it until I did some research on it. But uh, yeah, killer stuff. Steve Grimmett's not pictured there because. Uh, they had a bunch of singers doing some backing vocals, but Steve did some backing vocals. I don't know what tracks specifically, but uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, actually, I realized I missed a bunch of stuff I was going to talk about on In Search of Sandy. I missed a bunch of cool stuff like uh, Power Play, oh man, uh, or Welcome to Dying. That's a 12 minute epic chorus, ep epic glorious song. Power play, got some uh, ripping guitar, ripping thrash and guitar work on power play. And there's that for that. And then the sign of the sky was 89. Steve Grimmett had a couple year break, figured out what he was going to do, and he got together a Lion's Heart band, the very first Lion Heart album in 1992. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys, as much as I love uh, Grim Reaper, I actually think this is Steve Grimmett's best vocal performance ever. This is his best vocal performance, in my opinion. He's absolutely magnetic, magnificent, all of this album. I think a lot of the uh, slower, bluesy, melodic stuff is Steve Grimmett, Steve, Steve Grimmett like Room to Breathe, where you can actually breathe and really let this all let let everything out and just let it soar and let it kind of settle with you as opposed to like the more the more new wave of British heavy metal stuff is kind of like go 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 and this stuff just really lets them breathe a little bit and really lets them soar and hit some epic melodic catchy stuff and uh, yeah I I absolutely love this album. Like, I think you can kind of tell by the way I'm talking it up. Well, I think this is his best performance that he's ever put on a CD. And this is probably my favorite Steve Grimmett album that he's ever appeared on. Uh, yeah, please do not like skip this over or think it's bad. Uh, you, you may not like it. Maybe I, maybe I just really love it because I really love like bluesy rock, bluesy hard rock. So a lot of these licks are like bluesy hard rock. But, uh, yeah, he's kind of back to this, in this kind of lion's heart. It's kind of like this dirty, bluesy, hard rock, arena rock sound, 1992. And, yeah, just a shining moment for Steve, in my opinion. And uh, what do we got here? You know, obviously, the first couple tracks were just amazing. And then we're moving into uh, So Cold. I love So Cold here. Uh, this the chorus is so, uh, so cold. It's like, has your girl, has your heart grown cold? I, I love that. And next song, can't believe the, the chorus could uh, the chorus and can't believe that could have been if that was a, if this if, this, if the song can't believe was put out in nineteen in the eighties that could have been a huge hit song for them. A lot of these songs could have been a hit song for them in my opinion. That's just how catchy and great they are. And we got uh, track number seven, Living in a Fantasy. And Living in a Fantasy almost sounds like this uh, speedy Halloween, Halloween, like the band Halloween. It almost sounds like this speedy Halloween gallop to it. Uh, of course, Grimet style, not Halloween style, Grimet style, but it almost like reminded me of some speedy Halloween gallop -y kind of stuff. And All I Need, uh, track number nine. Uh, epic ballad, great tune, epic melodic ballad on that. Love that song. 
And at mercy, uh, at mercy, almost talking with ten reminds me of like a bluesy, metally bad alien stuff going on there. Then going down, uh, another nasty bluesy metal riff. Great, kind of great drums on that going down song. And the very last song, good enough, is uh, good enough. It's like a speedy melodic, speedy melodic track. Uh, this actually could have, that'd be one of the, if this song was released in the 80s, this, would, this is one of the best songs of the 90s, let's just say that. Going Good Enough, that's one of the best songs uh, of the 90s. Great stuff. And uh, there are some Lionheart albums I don't own. There's a Lionheart album from 1994, Ride and Task. And then there was also a Lion's Heart Under Fire in 1998. I don't own those. And this is a project I didn't even know about, but in 2002, Steve Burnett put out a friction project it's called Friction Friction from 2002. I checked it out on YouTube. It seems pretty uh, standard -y kind of stuff for 1992. It's okay, I may get it in the future. I didn't even know it existed, actually. And I'll take a little break here, and I'm playing, uh, oops. Sorry, I'm playing uh, Tarzan. I just got that. Yeah, I just got this in the mail. I forget the year on this. I think it's 1985. So you know, it's got that typical arena metal, Death Leopard y kind of uh, production. You can actually kind of hear the gang vocals right now. I kind of did a Death Leopard y kind of stuff. Although it's much more heavy than Death Leopard. So I just got this Tarzan album in the mail here. So I'm just uh, giving out a first play sort of thing. And then, uh, yeah, so we did Lion's Heart, uh, Lion's Heart Under Fire in 1998, and then Lion's Heart was back in 2003 with Abyss, and uh, you can kind of tell by Abyss in 2003, Steve, Steve, Met, Steve Grimet's voice, maybe his, like his verse voice has gotten a little deeper, but uh, he still has the high register when he wants to bust it out on the on the chorus and things that, things like that. He still does have the high register, so you know he fully hasn't lost it or nothing like that. So, uh, um, yeah, the, you know the, this this album still had does actually still does have like a new wave of British heavy metal undertone to it. So it's not like uh, fully gone from new wave of British heavy metal. I still think there is some new wave of British heavy metal vibes and aspects going on there, but. Uh, yeah, and you know, we got the first song here, or not the first, uh, you know, Screaming, the first song, Screaming. It's kind of like a Maiden-esque gallop going on there, and it kind of gives you those new wave of British heavy metal undertones. And we got uh, I Need Love, track number three. Love that ballad, that's a, that's a great ballad. And uh, next song, we got How Can I Tell You, number five. That's a great, that's a cool uh, mid bass melodic glory, just full of gloriness all over that track. And we got Save Me, a slower song, epic, epic, epic tune. Uh, Witchcraft, Witchcraft is pretty cool. Uh, you know, one of the one of the uh, lead and choruses to Witchcraft is like, you know, you're practicing your witchcraft on me, so that's cool. And let's say how long. How long number track number eleven? That's probably my favorite song on this album. Uh, Steve sounds fantastic. That's a great song. How long number eleven? And the then we got the closer of this. It actually closes on a heavy rocker tune, kind of a uh, very reminiscent of uh, of, Steve, of uh, Grim Reaper actually. And that's that. And then. Steve Redman had four years off in between Abyss and Personal Crisis. So Personal Crisis was 2007. And this has more of like a melodic power metal feel to it almost, like New Wave British Heavy Metal, powery. And this album is actually really awesome. I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if very many people have heard of it, but this album is very awesome, very cool. A lot of one-word uh, song titles here, like, Karma, freedom, lonely, afterglow, enemy, processes, invisible strength. So it's a lot of like one word, but I don't really know what's going on with that, but probably just happened by coincidence. But uh, 
Uh, what do we got here? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the opening track, Karma, here, uh, track number one. Yeah, it kind of has like this power metal, new, new wave of rich heavy metal sort of thing going on there. Very cool, heavy stuff. And then we got uh, Freedom is a good song. Afterglow is a heavy rocker, track number five. And yeah, I was going to say, like, I even wrote down, like, he sounds better here. I, I don't know, maybe the time off, but he sounds better here than he does on Abyss. So Abyss was 2003, and this 2007. I think maybe just the break, the rest. I don't know. He sounds better here. He sounds more rejuvenated than he, more rejuvenated here than he did on the fist. So he does sound better here. I think maybe it's just a break or whatever. But uh, then we got uh, track number six here, the enemy. That's a fast-paced rocker. And there's some uh, there's a female vocal on here. I'm not sure who's doing it, but they kind of uh, have this kind of duet female female track on there. But it's a good rocker. And then we got Wrath of the Ripper here, and uh, Wrath of the Ripper. I don't know if you remember, but uh, Wrath of the Ripper is a Grim Reaper track, so they he re-recorded it here. So uh, the re-record sounds fine to me, you know. He, he can still belt just like he could back when it was recorded. So he can still belt. He can still cover his own song. So he re-recorded. He basically covered Grim Reaper. <laughs> Funny he covered himself. And the very last track, Fallen. Uh, it's going to sound weird, but even though it's the last track on the album, it's probably my favorite track on this album. Uh, yeah, have you, have you Fallen? Power, have, power Hard Rock here right there kind of power power metal power hard rock great track and uh he was uh feeling in the mood so even though personal crisis was 2007 the very next year in 2008 he put up his Grimstein album and i don't know what his his voice sounds a little tired like it's, it's much stronger on this album and this album does sound a little worn out Although he still can hit some high registers here and there. I'm not going to totally downplay him or nothing like that. But, you know, uh, I, I definitely do prefer his solo album, The, the Personal Crisis, over this. But uh, this is still a decent album. There's some good tracks on there. I've been playing it lots at work, so I've been getting adjusted to a lot of the albums here. I mean, a lot of the songs from this album. But uh, here we got 9-11, the opening track. That's a fun little uh, opening tune, cool guitar work. And you know, it's gonna, I did write down his voice sounds a little bit deeper compared to Abyss and Personal Crisis, but it's still there. Uh, Supernatural, good track. To Catch a Killer. Uh, to Catch a Killer, track number five. That's a cool, heavy, fast paced, melodic, powerish track. It's weird, a lot of these, the vibes are kind of powery, but they're not like super aggressive power. It's very, mid paced melodic power metal, if, if you will. And we got uh, track number eight, Prisoner. Uh, a good slower mid paced track, straight and straight as an arrow. And actually, straight and straight as an arrow, track number ten, almost has like this cool uh, King Diamond esque kind of piano intro, where you almost think you're listening to like a, an intro to a King Diamond track. That's what I thought anyway. And yeah, it's a cool, perfect song for Steve, actually. Melodic, catchy, heavy, kind of strikes all those boxes. Melodic, catchy, heavy. So that's track number uh, 10, Straight as an Arrow. And then we got, uh, where are we are yeah. Two Steps Behind. Uh, actually, it's a bonus track. Not really zooming in, but yeah, the very last track here is a bonus track, I guess. But Two Steps Behind has this cool kind of cool bluesy rock, uh, cool bluesy rocker, kind of reminiscent of some of the uh, Lion's Heart stuff. And I think I touched on that. I don't think I missed anything on that one. And then uh, another new one I didn't even know about is. Uh, Steve Grimet did in Steve Grimet did in 2015. He did a uh, project called The Sanity Days, where he re-teamed with a bunch of the uh, 
a bunch of the old onslaught guys saw the old onslaught guys and him kind of re-teamed up and did the sanity days in 2015 and that's so new to me i hadn't really played it it does seem kind of heavy and you know steve grametti it's all six steve grametti if that makes any sense right you know you know what you get yourself into with the speaking of that so um that'd be cool to get that sanity days in 2015 a project i didn't even know about and then he was back it was quite a big jump from grimstein 2008 and then that 2015 sanity days or even it's the next Grim Reaper that he took out in 2016. So here we are, 2016. And right off the bat, you can kind of tell there's a bit of a heavier tone going on here. I think you did have to just say, uh, you know, it's got to be a little bit heavier than his previous stuff just to kind of uh, make do with the, you know, give the new wave of heavy British, the uh, Grim Reaper new wave of British heavy metal sound a little bit justice, right? So. He's doing some justice here. Wings of Angels rocks the first song, you know, rocker. And the next track, Walking in the Shadows, that's just classic. Catchy Steve right there. Um, again, very weird. His, his voice can be up and down with a lot of his tracks, where I thought on Grimstein, his, his vocals was sound a little more tired. But then with, with Walking in the Shadows, they're back and high again, very high register. So I don't know, maybe it was just a break between 2008 and 2016, he had a rest and maybe he's rejuvenated his voice or what it means, well rested, I don't know. But again, his voice sounds better and pristine on here than it did on Invis and Grimstein. So uh, yeah, he's, he's back to form on this in my, in my opinion. And uh, we got track number three, Reach Out, that's a good one. So you got From Hell, track number five. Classic epic power chorus on From Hell. So we got Call Me in the Morning, track number six. Fast paced rocker on that one. Fast paced rocker, just classic Steve Grimet here. And we got Rock Will Never Die. Uh, Rock, Rock Will Never Die, track number six, seven. And that just kind of reminds me of a Lionheart track, just, you know, kind of. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Lion's Heart Rocker there. Now we got Thunder. Thunder track number nine. And Steve sounds great on Thunder. He just sounds magnificent. So that's a good one. That uh, just definitely stands out there. And you got Now You See Me. I'd say that might be one of my favorite songs on this uh, album. Now You See Me. Now You Don't. Uh, yeah, Now You See Me. Now You Don't. You Can Save Me, But You Won't. So that's cool stuff. Blue Thunder, Blue Thunder, all I wrote down and described that is Heavy Thunder, <laughs> you know, that's just cool Heavy Power Thunder track, and uh, I've got the last song in, it's the last song on the album, Come Hell or High Water, that's a great closer, you always seem to have really great, close, great openers and great closers, so it's one of these uh, albums where it's got a great closer on there, total speed 101 here on this, Heavy, catchy, melodic. Again, he strikes all those boxes with that heavy, catchy, melodic, and that's just classic essential Steve right there. And then he did uh, 2018, 2019, he put on another Steve Grimet, Steve Grim Reaper album, At the Gates. I don't own At the Gates, so I'm just going to uh, show more of this. I, I don't own At the Gates, so I didn't really do, a, I'm not going to really do a full on review of that one. And there we go, we got my Steve Grimet uh, appreciation, our spotlight uh, for Steve Grimet. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for checking it out. And I'm rocking to start Tarzan on the back, some obscure, I don't even know where they're from. I, think they're, I, think they're, I, I don't even know where they're from. They might be German or Italian or something like that. But uh, I'll do that, I'll do this uh, Tarzan on a future uh, vinyl update here in a couple of weeks or whatever. And yeah, thanks for watching this uh, spotlight. And, you know, I'd say if, if there's one album that you got to get into, is uh, please get into this first line part album. I absolutely adore this album. This is one of my favorite all-time vocal performances ever, along with the along with that Betsy album. Oh man, I love the Betsy album. Love this Lion's Heart album. So I uh, definitely check out this Lion's Heart album and uh, subscribe, Mosh, Lion's Heart.